So, today is Mars. We did Venus last time, today is Mars. Mars is a planet of great aspiration. Like, if we're going to start on the high end of things, the Mars in your chart is all about where you want to have your heroic quest. It's all about the energy of saying, I aspire to do this. I, I, I am determined to do this. It has a lot of uh, idealism and conviction and energy and drive and determination. Now, if your Mars is well aspected in your chart and in a, in a particularly sort of uh, potent sign, then all of that's going to be moving in you. If it's, if it's not as well aspected, well then we might have issues with motivation, we might have issues with um, frustration, irritation, you know, and also uh, we might have issues with just getting, this is if it's strong or not, you might have issues with just the desire nature sort of taking over, taking over one's true soul calling. So if I was going to sort of paint a big picture, Venus has to do with the soul, right? Venus has to do with the soul's calling. It has to do with the, our highest uh, qualities that we want to give. It's a very selfless energy. Mars has to, is our personality. Mars is like, okay, Venus, I'll get on board if, you know, if I like where you're going. It's, it's full of, you know, and, and if I don't like where you're going, I'm going to go off or I'm going to bug you or I'm going to get in your way or I'm going to uh, generate all this angst, right? So um, Mars rules the solar plexus, so it, it rules the seat of the emotions. So the question is, what do you do with that? Do you release it or do you hold it all in, right? Or do you talk about it a lot, right? Or do you just slowly move through assimilating and digesting and, and uh, oh, let's look at that, let's look at that. You can, you can feel into the elements that I'm, ta I'm talking about, air, earth, fire, water. Um, it rules, yeah, it rules the astral nature, it rules desire, it rules how you deal with your emotional life. Are you reactive or are you tranquil? Are you, are you full, it has a lot to do with anger. How do we use our anger? How do we, uh, do we re re repress it or do we release it? Okay, like and there are a couple of images with Mars. Um, when I was little, I loved to play Red Rover. Do you, you know the like, Red Rover? Red Rover? I loved that game. And now Mars is my it was one of my ruling planets because anybody who's an Aries has Mars as a ruling planet, right? So that feeling of like busting through, you know, somebody's arms was just like deliriously exciting. I think that's the only time I can think of like in my life, like enjoying that kind of like, you know, um, violent breakthrough. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I know, I know. <laughs> but I would just stand there and be like waiting to be called over and then I just flail myself. Right now. <laughs> now, now granted, if I had, if I was an Aries, which I am, with Mars in Aries, ooh, I would have been really like, not only would I love that game, but I would have hurled myself through the rest of my life, right? But, but my, my, my Mars is very t tempered because it's in Libra, so it's much more peaceful, and we'll talk more about that. But one, one image of, of that is Red Rover. Another image of um, a friend who shall be, remain nameless um, talks about how when she was little and she'd get angry, she never spoke it, but she'd crumple napkins I, wherever she was. Like instead of speaking, she would crumple napkins under the table or, you know, and that's a very, um, that, that's not really releasing one's Mars. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's another image. Mars, Mars, it's, it's a, any athletes have strong Mars, okay? I mean, I would say that's fair to say. I mean, I'm sure there, there are a lot, that's a gross generalization, but uh, there was a researcher named um, M M Michel Gauquelin who discovered, he, he looked at, at thousands and thousands of charts, and initially he was like, he didn't believe in astrology at all. He thought it was a bunch of crap, and he was, and, and so he decided to study it, and he discovered that in an inordinate number of charts of athletes, Mars was either at the ascendant or at the midheaven, like in a really prominent position. 
And he also discovered like politicians, Jupiter was either at the you know, ascendant or the midheaven. So he, he, it was like something like three quarters of the athletes or seven eighths of the athletes, it was a crazy number, right? So that athletic energy is very connected to Mars. Where's um, Andrews? Andrews is Mars in Aquarius, which is interesting because it's, uh, it, it, it's more, uh, you know, any air sign is more intellectual with the Mars energy. Um, Let's see. And another image would be, well, let me say this. I would say like seven of you here tonight have Mars in a difficult aspect with the moon. So in other words, it's square, opposite, or in conjunct. A couple of you, I think, Peg, you actually have it in a harmonious position. Trying, yeah. yeah, but uh, mo most of us here <laughs> have, um, have a, a uh, difficult relationship with Mars and moon. And that's actually a very... Um, that's sort of like having Mars in Cancer, where Mars in Cancer, where the emotions are really held, held in and one is cautious with them, or one is extremely reactive. So when you have the Moon-Mars thing, it's something about what feels good, what's habitual, what I, what I naturally do is not in sync with my, desire, my drive to go out and do it. Does that make sense? So, I mean, we'll talk more about that, but I always find it interesting when there's a pattern when it's like, wow, you know, we have this whole collection of Moon Mars issues. And then, like, for example, the class that I'm going to go teach tomorrow, there is so much Cancer energy. I mean, it's like four Moon in Cancer, you know, seven, you know, just Cancer, Cancer, Cancer. Of course, as a teacher, I'm like, okay, clearly I'm going to be dealing with some emotional issues. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, Moon and Capricorn, can we not just get into that? Can we have it all nice and, you know, <laughs> just talk about how tea would be lovely to have with cookies, you know? So you really, wow. yeah, it's, it's intense. Okay, so also sexual energy, what you're attracted to, uh, how you want to engage sexually, um, it's because it's primal. Mars is primal. It's a, a base. It's, a, you know, base not in a bad word, but just, you know, whoo, coming out of the your the Earth, it's like, oh, this is what I want. Mars is really about, if you have a strong Mars, you can be like, I want that. If you have a Mars that's sort of like, then you're like, you could, you'll drift around, right? <laughs> we all want, I wish I had a strong Mars. You have to realize that like, it's always good to know from whence the words come, you know? So my Mars is retrograde, it's in Libra, which is the most peaceful sign, and it's um, and it's in the 29th degree, which means you really got to get it right this time, you know. So it's like it's like I'm not the spokesperson for Mars. I'll tell you like, like my Mars is in a Venus sign, so it's like Venus, you know. But so we're all we're, we're all learning our Mars lessons. Another really interesting way to think about it is that it is the energetic opposition to the soul. It's it's part of it. I'll be really dramatic here and call it part of the dweller on the threshold, okay? So in our lives, we have the angel of the presence, let's go into mythic world, we have the angel of the presence, which is the soul, and we have the dweller on the threshold, which is all the stuff that raises its ugly head and says, you will not become a soul-infused personality, you know? You will, you, will, you will stick to the things of the physical world, you will stick to the things of, um, of, of, of self, things only for the self, you know? Um, and, and it's all the emotional stuff that gets in the way of leading the lives we want to lead. The, the peaceful, centered, harmless, potent, transformational lives we want to lead. But as I said at the beginning, it's, it's so important to say, to know that nothing of value in Venus is accomplished without the effort of Mars. So you really need them working together. You need to, we need to love our Mars and lift it to its, it, at its best, Mars says, give me a heroic quest. Give me a journey to go on. Give me something pa to be passionate about. And if you don't have that, like if kids don't have a way to like let their heroic Mars out, then they get, they're gonna get in trouble. And we're gonna get in our own kind of trouble. We're gonna get, be you know, lazy or unfocused or, uh, or irritated or self-absorbed. We're gonna get into our own kind of trouble. But we definitely need to sort of be you know, Mars likes to be a protector as well. It likes to, it likes to fiercely protect. You know, it doesn't, Mars is the god of war, but, but really it wants to fight to protect as opposed to fight to demolish at its highest level. It wants to say, you know, Mars and Cancer people, 
particularly. It's like the mother bear energy. It's the ferocious mother bear energy that says, I am going to take care of you. You know, But Mars in general would <coughs> rather be the warrior for the good. Okay, um, Mars rules Aries and Mars rules Scorpio. All right. And um, so it's very at home there. So Mars and Aries is really the warrior out in the world. The, you know, you want to get it done, I'll get it done. You know, you just smashing through things. Aries rules the head, you know, Mars and Aries would be like diving in, you know. Mars in Scorpio is the fight within. So it's that same kind of intensity, but it's going in. And it's saying, I will wrestle with myself until I lift the diff most difficult parts of myself into the light. You know, it's really willing to do the battle. The fire sign Mars are very quick, quick to anger, quick to, to leap in. Of course, this all has to do with where your Mars is placed relative to other planets. But in general, Mars in fire signs, very passionate, very quick, very bright, very energetic, uh, not at all doesn't have a real hard time just getting, boom, letting it out, you know, just letting it out there. Who has Mars in Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn? Okay, one.